Stargazer is Brian Coulter here, Evolutionary Astrologer, for another horoscope report for the upcoming Aries New Moon that happens on April 1st. And April is probably the most dramatic month of the year astrologically, so really I'll be describing the energy of the month. Before we get to that though, I have an announcement. So I'm launching my new webinar intensive workshop. It's going to be four hours long. It's going to be on April 10th at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's 30% off for those of you who want to pre-order. Uh, it's going to be $54 as the sale price. And I invite you to join me. I'm calling it Unlocking Your Inner Mystic, where we will talk everything Neptune. And since I was born with a Neptune-Sun conjunction, you know, it's, a, it's an archetypal field. I know a lot about just on a personal level. We'll be able to talk about different birth chart placements. Where's the Neptune in your chart? What sign? What house? How does it affect us when we're experiencing a big Neptunian chapter of our life where Neptune is transiting a sensitive point in our birth chart? Also, how Neptune interacts with certain planets. So we'll be talking everything Neptune and be using chart examples and dig as deeply as we can. So again, April 10th at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's on sale on my website. And this event is really, the reason why I picked this subject is in celebration of this massive event this month that I've been talking about. Every astrologer has been banging the drums of the Neptune-Jupiter conjunction in Pisces that is hitting its crescendo on April 12th, just a couple days after the webinar. So perfect time to be talking all things Neptune. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the energy. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the chart here so you can see what I'm looking at. It's always good to get a visual. And this is where the planets will be aligned on the morning of April 1st from the perspective of Portugal, where I am. So, wow, you know, here you have the sun and moon right off on the left side of the chart. What that means for people in Western Europe is this new moon will happen right at sunrise on April 1st. So as we're looking at this very complex cocktail of planets here. One thing I noticed right away is these lines in the center here, these are known as aspects. A lot of these key planets are an aspect in activating the nodes of the moon. What we're going to be talking a lot about here are these cluster of planets in Aquarius, of course the two in Pisces, and the four we see here in Aries. And you see this Aquarian cluster and the Pisces cluster are both activating the nodes. And as an evolutionary astrologer, I focus on the nodes extensively. And the south node of the moon is in Scorpio. The way we read this is it's the collective karma. The karma has ripened for us when we look at the transiting nodes. In this case, it's very Scorpionic karma. And we have the north node of the moon in Taurus, which is the karmic remedy or medicine that will help us to heal from some of the more challenging, or in this case, wounding elements of the South Node, because Scorpio is about our wounds. So the collective wounds are really triggered. And of 2022, we could say this is the most karmic time of this year, where all the habitual energy within individuals, especially if these nodes are hitting a sensitive point in their chart, but also within the collective, are rising to the surface because they're getting triggered by these Aquarian planets and the Pisces ones. So there's so much to unpack here. There's a stark contrast of energies. On one hand, this new moon, as well as Mercury, as well as Chiron, they're all in the sign of Aries. Here we are, when the sun enters Aries, spring starts, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, where these symbols really evolved. So this is warrior energy. It's the pioneer. It's the ram. It, it moves forth. Warrior energy. So it's the outrushing power of spring. And these planets up here in Aquarius, one of them is Mars. Mars rules Aries. So there's a lot of warrior energy going on. And Mars is known as the lef lesser malefic in astrology. And it a, has a heavy triggering influence. And here it is, Mars, the war god, is triggering Saturn, which is known as the greater malefics. So we have the two malefics coming together in the sky. Now, this is a major trigger event. So over the last couple of years, as many of you know, it's been a Saturn dominant time. So Saturn themes tend to be restriction, um, 
wisdom-inducing experiences, a feeling of being blocked or slowed down, great challenges. Why? Because we're being called to mature. It's the planet of wisdom, ultimately. But Saturn-Pluto conjunction of 2020 was a major event. Of course, it happened in Capricorn, the sign that Saturn rules. And now, this year and 2021, the major event has been Saturn square Uranus. We're not going to talk a whole lot about Uranus in this video, but this is still ongoing. And this is another major event. So Saturn's been super dominant over the last couple of years. And each time the, the triggering planet of Mars has activated this Saturn, we've seen more of the Saturnian qualities and more extreme examples of hardship. Okay. So this is, um, this is going to be, in some respects, a tense month because there's a lot of warrior energy. Now, this, when I say triggering, typically very um, extreme examples of this archetypal field become very obvious on the world stage. Of course, we have a war going on right now. I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but I would say something dramatic is going to happen there for better or for worse. I feel like there's going to be a major shift maybe even a shocking shift because it's in the sign of Aquarius, which links to shock and trauma and stuff like this. I'm not trying to be a doom and gloomer, uh, but uh, history has shown me that when Mars and Saturn come together, the two malefics, it does have this triggering effect, okay? Now, there's going to be, um, okay, so of course, this is square the nodes, right? Okay, so triggering the collective karma, of Scorpio, of our, of our woundedness that's going to, because of the triggering influence of these other planets, especially through the square, which is known as a hard aspect, it's a friction-based aspect, the wounds are going to get triggered by external pressures and rise to the surface. All the pain, the grief, the anger, the rage, the despair, you know, because we basically don't want that in us. You know, we don't want that in our unconscious and subconscious mind. It's unhealthy. It can fester within our psyche. And in some cases, even manifest as physical illness and disease. So it's uncomfortable. Okay, It can really bring us to our knees when these wounds rise to the, to the surface. But they're being called to be released. You know, what the image that comes to mind, and this is kind of a gross one, with Saturn and Mars squaring the nodes, uh, specifically the Scorpio South node, is this is a time to lance the boil, basically, because that boil needs to heal and it has to release all the gook, all the toxins, so that we can ultimately transform, which is the highest octave expression or intention connected to the archetypal field of Scorpio. Ultimately, it's about healing, but we have to let go of the karmic habit energies of the past in order to do that. Meanwhile, these external pressures, okay, come to us in a sometimes fierce way because we are talking about a lot of warrior energy here, you know, with Mars square the nodes, you know, this new moon happening in the warrior, the sign of the warrior Aries. I'll also point out that Chiron, the wounded healer, is in a very tight conjunction with this new moon. Okay, so it's about being felt and released. Here's another emotion associated with, uh, you know, Aries and Mars, anger. Okay, so anger. Uh, this, and if there's a major war conflict going on, I feel like, again, we're going to see a heightening of that. Now, also, here's another emotion associated with Aries and Mars, fear. Okay, so a lot of fear, a lot of tension. I feel like I'm giving a doom and gloom reading here, but... You know, there is a positive way of working with this. There is an evolutionary intention amidst the chaos. You know, there is a holy grail of this, of course, which we're going to explore. So when people are in fear states, and of course, Mercury in Aries, there's part of this that is about fear in the mind because Mercury is of the mind. It's how we perceive reality. It's about our intelligence. So it's also about information. So data coming in that scares us, okay, and affects our mind. It affects how we even perceive reality. Mercury, the planet of perception. When people are in a state of fear consciousness, their perception of reality is quite malleable and moldable. 
and they're susceptible to external pressures. They're susceptible to psyops they're and propaganda and stuff like this. So there is a phrase, I want to use it here, fear is the mind killer. Okay? And that's one reason why, because our perception is more vulnerable to being manipulated by our external pressures. So, of course, we want to keep our consciousness level high amidst the chaos. Enter J Jupiter conjunct Neptune in Pisces. You know, I talked a lot about this event in the last video I did. I want to revisit some of these concepts here because here they are forming an exact conjunction. It's not exact on the new moon. Obviously, they're still two degrees apart. But on April 12th, they come together. This is the most important month of the year, in my opinion, as we try to leverage these energies, which are actually quite beautiful. And Jupiter-Neptune, it's not a super rare event. They come together every 13 years or so. But what makes this rare is it's happening in Pisces. And there's two planets that rule Pisces, these two planets, Jupiter and Neptune. So to, to have uh, both of Pisces' rulers coming together in the sky is very special. It hasn't happened since the 1850s and is offering us a precious opportunity. And it's also supporting the same nodal axis, which is getting squared by the two malefics and Venus. So the sextile and the trine is really the beautiful part of this that can help not cancel out the square, but help us to deal with the square, deal with the tension and the hardship. And this is very positive and optimistic, I could say, because Jupiter represents the planet of joy, optimism, generosity, big-spiritedness, saying yes to life. And that's what I talked about in the last video. My take on this is ultimately about spiritual development. That's just the nature of Pisces. And we can spiritually develop, we can raise our consciousness in more Jupiterian ways, but also Neptunian ways. The Jupiterian way with that bigness of heart is saying yes to life. What can I claim in my life? Where am I lacking faith in myself in my life? And how can I go all in? How can I put all my chips in the middle and claim something in this audacious act of faith that will then raise my consciousness? That's the Jupiter side. Neptune's very different, but these can fit together. Neptune is the classic mystic archetype where we try to release attachment to the things of this world. Anything that gets us caught up in the, the dream, the maya, the illusion of it all. It's like, what can I release from my life? Okay, to what? To raise my consciousness. So two different methods of achieving the same goal. And I talked about this before. It's like, okay, ask yourself the Jupiter question. What can I claim in my life? Follow that up with the Neptunian question, what can I release from my life with the goal being to raise my consciousness, okay? This is a deeply spiritual combination in its essence, a divinity, if you will. And, you know, I talked a lot about this before, but I went even more in depth on this event on my Patreon. I just launched my new Patreon last month, and we have this growing tribe of what I call uh, Brian's Jedi stargazers, you know, where the Jedi part is where we practice meditation together and use technologies and techniques to also get into this, you know, higher frequency, higher vibration, so that we can work with the archetypes through the astrology, through the stargazing, through looking at the sky and integrate those energies along our spiritual path. So I teach mysticism there at the Patreon. And I also teach um, astrology, obviously. And I, I started an inner circle of students where I work with you on a very personal level. So if you're interested in that, of course, you can see my Patreon link on the screen here. But I'll also put a link below in the show notes. And, and uh, I, we had our first four live events this month. It was a great success. And in one of those, I did a, a very detailed horoscope video where I talked about those two questions. What can you claim? What can you release? based on what house it is in your chart, based on your rising sign. So it's a much more personal uh, description of, of, your, of your own horoscope. So, yeah, this is, this is a big one. And um, also, you know, with the, there's a, this is a visionary time. This is a time of major manifester of what I like to call spell weaving, you know. And with Neptune in Pisces, the visionary time, okay, 
Can we create a Neptunian vision of a more Jupiterian or, let's say, hope for a better future? Okay. And, of course, with the Aquarian energy is activating this already Aquarian age that we've entered into. We're trying to co-create a better future, a more humanitarian future. We're not guaranteed that, of course, but that's a worthy goal, especially now. How can we dream engineer a better future as we raise our consciousness? And of course, if we do raise our consciousness, our ability to manifest increases exponentially and we're less susceptible to fear as the mind killer. Fear is the perception killer, you know, in terms of our own personal power. Okay, so we have these two different sets of energies, you know, Aries, Mars activating the nodal axis. And of course, there's going to be uh, beautiful aspects about this Saturn Mars, might be harder to, to integrate or to work with, but we'll also see incredible acts of heroism, indomitable will. You know, survival and force of will against all the odds. We're going to see a lot of that behavior too, which will strengthen people's uh, courage and bravery, okay, and their fortitude. You know, there's there's great growth potential here, okay. And in fact, when the malefics come together, and especially if they're in hard aspect to the nodes, the growth potential here is tremendous, okay. But it's harder. It's more challenging. That's just the nature of Saturn, especially when it's aided and abetted by Mars. So these two very different sets of energies. Fear is the mind killer. Meanwhile, we're trying to commune with the divine on the other side. Trying to develop our inner spiritual warrior amidst the spiritual warfare. You know, oof. You know, it's 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 tense. And we take this idea, okay, how can we integrate warrior energy with the energy of the mystic? Well, warriors, this archetypal field is ultimately about action. It's the sign of action. Act first, ask questions later. Really all fire signs are, but especially Aries. And then we take of a spiritual concept of action. It makes me think of uh, karma yoga. You know, it's the path of action. Being more assertive in doing good works and creating good karma. So that's one aspect of it. It's like, how can I strengthen my own spiritual development by taking actions or maybe creating a new beginning because also the new moon is about new beginnings? How can I take action to heal, to transform, resolve some of this, this uh, collective karma that's coming up, that's triggering me, you know, as I strive for this Taurus nor North Node, which is about embodying a deeper level of peace? How do you make a perpetual peace treaty in a very chaotic environment. You know, well, we're always going to circle back to this, this ace in the hole here with this Jupiter-Neptune conjunction by strengthening your inner mystic. So taking an evolutionary astrology workshop called Unlocking Your Inner Mystic is a perfect opportunity. <laughs> Cringe. Okay, so another one that I thought of in terms of spirituality is the Jupiter piece. Jupiter, when we talk about qualities of character associated with Jupiter, and it's easy, it's easiest to like personify this as a person. Jupiter people tend to be very generous and giving people. And they're very optimistic. But they give, 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 give. And they typically gain a lot too. They, the purpose of Jupiter folks is to create an abundance in the self so that they can pass on their abundance through the innate generosity that they have. So we also think about the, the spiritual practice of generosity. And uh, I think in Buddhism, they call it dana paramita. Uh, I'm not a Buddhist, but uh, based on my research, this is following the virtue of generosity, the virtue of giving oneself and of service. Okay, And the meditation that I created for this video that I released on my podcast. I'll put a link below. I call it the meditation of kings. It's a meditation where we can actually practice with the superpower that is our ability to visualize in our mind. We practice giving of our spirit to others, giving prayer, giving blessings. It's a perfect meditation to practice this month during this pivotal event. So in my opinion, 
these are the core evolutionary intentions for this month. So the question becomes, you know, as tense things happen, as the collective karma, the boil is lanced, how exactly is that going to manifest? I have no idea. But I would be surprised if there wasn't some very tense things that happened, especially in the first two weeks of this month. And during this more chaotic period, a lot of people are going to get angry and scared. You know, that's just the archetypal field associated with Aries. The question becomes, can we remain strong, which is another Aries quality? Can we be uh, resolute? Can we strengthen that indomitable willpower, the act of the hero, staying strong, becoming the spiritual warrior, focusing on our spiritual development to do that? And amidst the chaos, still moving forward, the karma yoga, that of action and giving, uh, the generosity. Also, what can I claim? What can I release from my life on the spiritual path so I can stay in the love state instead of the fear state? So a good affirmation for this month is no matter what, I resolve to be in love and to give of my love. Those are the core evolutionary intentions with the goal being to expand our consciousness. <laughs> <laughs>